Hey everyone, Zephyr here. Bailey and I are back with Voxra and switching over to Foundry VTT from Roll20. In this continuation of our last session, we've already learned how to import things with the D&D Beyond Importer. So today we are going to be tackling creating characters through Foundry itself, which includes setting up our players. Then we're going to go ahead and import another character from the D&D Beyond Importer and we'll run a basic combat. Let us know in the comments if there is anything that you have questions about, and we hope that you enjoy this conversation as much as we did. Well, what do you guys think? Do you want to just go through the process of, of building a you know a level one character and and, like and then having him get killed by a, a beast? Ancient red dragon. Yeah. So go to your. Um, well, first of all, should we talk about how to add players? Because you know what I would love? I would love to be a player in this world. <laughs> and I want to join you in it and do stuff. Absolutely. Uh, so to add in your players, we'll have to go to our settings over there to the far right. And there's user management. Just above the help of documentation. User management. Yep, I'm still getting used to where some of these things all are. Right. Yep. You definitely take that organization and knowing it really well for granted after a while. But yeah, here you set up all of your different players and you can configure their uh, initial passwords, etc. There's user roles on the side and there's a few different options for that. So I'd like I'd like a player named Bailey Wiki. B A E L B A I L E Y it's actually not the right spelling of bailiwick in case nobody figured that out. <laughs> uh, and then, um, uh, I don't know, give me a password of the, uh, the Zoom. I don't know if you still have that on your... I, you like the I, Zoom I do. I do. Well, I have it in the... Great. And you'll notice my role is player, but if you hit that drop down, you would see other options. Oh, awesome. Oh, this is really awesome. Right? Oh, that's so cool. So you can set the actual permissions of those different roles. Also, you can further customize those under, uh, I think it's the configure permissions button. We won't have to do that today, but yeah, you can have trusted players come in, help assist you. You can have, you know, assistant GMs. It's really nice. Sorry, Zephyr. See, I, I, made the, I made the inner circle. <laughs> I'll at least I'll, I'll at least level you up a little bit. There you go. All right. At least I'm not a little peon. <laughs> And then same password. For Sounds good. Zephyr there. You want to make sure you hit save and return. And now in the bottom left hand corner, if you click that little carrot up, and there's your players. And if we were in the game, I think you would see us let up that way. Okay. So now let's create a character for one of these players. If you go to your actor tab, uh, create an actor. This is going to be a player character. Let's call this one. Uh, uh, what I guess let's make my character the same as my my player. Yeah, that way we can keep track of us. Okay. Uh, I don't know what that D&D Beyond thing does, but I'll bet if we click on it, it probably lets us import something, right? Yep. Yeah, it looks like if you have the URL. Yeah. Beautiful. So we can show that for my character, uh, how that one works. All right. Great. Fantastic. So we'll skip it for mine. And uh, we'll just show you how to use this. So those compendiums, if you open up your DDB compendiums and start dragging things over, uh, so let's go, let's pick a um, uh, class. So I would like to be a, uh, I would like to be a bard. 
and just okay. yeah, drag that in and let it go. Oh. All right, we have spell casting and we have bardic inspiration. Those are two things that we want. And hit complete. And yeah, so oh great, I'm a bard. Now a bard. I'm a bard. I always wanted to be. Um, and of course, we can go through the process of like, you know, rolling or however you want to uh, do your stuff. We're just sort of manually creating a character here. What's nice about D&D Beyond, which Zephyr will show you, is that you can use their whole character building, um, you know, tool set, and it'll just automatically bring the character over. But anything that you wanted to drag, like feats, spells, you know, racial features, all of that is uh is possible here you literally just drag it on like you saw before and um you see you have these different tabs here inventories all of your items your features your spell book as you drag those things over you can drop them into these different tabs and they'll be ready to go this is going to be fantastic for my players because some of the biggest challenges that they have and some of their biggest frustrations are with the spells mm. yeah um in terms of like i know that you know bards may not get some of these specific ones but if i were to draw this in here um they're just like okay what does this do and i'm like well click on it and they're like well i can't click on it, it doesn't do anything you know and it's just like <laughs> okay, right now you have to prepare spells over on the right you see a, a faded sort of sun icon um just two icons over from that garbage can that you were hovering over uh, so that'll prepare a spell, right? In case that is a requirement for the spell yep. casting. So you've got filters up at the top too, for if you want to sort by action or bonus action, uh, reaction, etc., and whether they're prepared or not. Yeah, and we're looking at the default sheet. You see that up above there where it says sheet in a, a gear next to it. You can have other sheets as options, and you can your players can even pick the ones that they like. So there's they and there's some really sexy character sheets out there, yeah. uh, some that even have some extra intelligence built into them. So I also recommend that you take a look at those and you know see if you want to give your players some options. Absolutely. So let's build my character. All right. This will be easy. So create a new actor. We'll call this one. Zephyr. So now when you click on that, I sent you a link in our chat that you should be able to paste in there. And you'll notice that my name is no longer going to be Zephyr, and this character sheet is going to really transform when you paste that in. Which chat did you uh, send? Oh, sorry. It's in our Discord chat rather than the uh, Zoom chat. But I can put it in Zoom if that's easier. Oh, no, I got it. Now, does your character have to be public or can it be private? Uh, I believe it needs to be public, but you'll see that now this is showing uh, the character that I play in my weekly game. That's Gomer Press Newberry, who is a gnome artificer. And you can see that this already has these primary, secondary, and tertiary resources already configured and everything. From the D&D Beyond environment. So it's a little bit of a mixture of the D&D Beyond environment being smart and also uh, this importer being smart with our Foundry character sheets. If you look over on the left to our original sheet, there is on the right side of the sheet itself, there is resource one, two, three. And those are basically your easy tracking for different things, such as uh, my magical tinkering as an artificer, or probably something more relevant would be a fighter's action surge or second wind so that you can keep track of those things that aren't necessarily spell slots, but are resources that you get back on either short rests or long rests. So this is already really nicely configured for you. Very cool. So if you hit default, then we'll go ahead and bring those in. That, and now it's gonna start the actual importing process. We'll see that my whole character sheet is transformed. My HP is in there, my movement, my attributes, you can even look in my inventory and my features and spell book, and all of those are going to be in there. 
And when you go to to level your character up, you would do it in D and D Beyond, and then you would just come back in here and re-import the character, right? Yeah, and actually, there's a really great feature that's available to uh, Mr. Primate's Premium subscribers that you can actually sync this back. So if there's a custom item that you added to Gomer that he picked up on an adventure that's like built within Foundry, it's actually going to go ahead and sync that back. Or if I picked up another item on the trail, like if I picked up a plus one longsword, then it will go back and add that to my D&D Beyond character sheet. Brilliant. Now, what if what happens if say like we have we have imported the D&D Beyond item resources mm -hmm. for Rime of the Frost Maiden for this adventure we're about to set on? Say, for instance, you get one of those items from that adventure on this character. Do you have to have the content in D&D Beyond in order for that to come through? Or is it just kind of like a line of code that says that this character has this if it imports into an environment with that? You know, that's a good question, and I'm not sure. I know if you are using the campaign sharing aspect of D&D Beyond that that would work, yeah. regardless. Okay. Yep. But I'm not Same. completely sure here. Um, how I've used it in the past is I would normally do something like you bring in your characters initially through D&D Beyond, and then we do the rest of our leveling up afterwards. But I usually start games at a higher level of like five or something like that. So that's a little more practical there as opposed to the early yeah. levels where you're leveling up a lot more frequently. Okay, that makes sense. Great. So do you guys uh, want to do just a quick scene, drag some of these players I on? Like Let's do it. And just like run a little combat and see, see how we do. All right, so go to, uh, or we could just cr uh, cr grab a scene. Let's grab like, um, I think you've got the Bailey Wiki scenes already going. We can grab the ghost ship or you've got levels now. So, uh, but let's, let's use a simple scene to start. I'm not sure if we load. Oh, it's not. Yeah. It's not active yet. Uh, well then you could do a mad cartographer or. Take a look at one of those. That one also probably isn't enabled. Let's go load some launches. <laughs> <laughs> Say yes. And Mad Cartographer should be down there. Uh, or the Mad Cartographer, I think it's the T-H-E. Yeah, there you go. All right, so we've got some stuff to mess around with. I really like how flexible it is and quick. You can go back to different things. Like, you know, we're we're finding things as we're doing this. Oh, we need to add this. We need to add that. It's really quick and easy to just go add another module. It's not like you have to restart the application and everything. Right. You log back in every time. That's very nice. Oh, I mean, uh, I saved it, right? So. Uh, I don't know. I, I remember seeing a dialogue that you said no to or you skipped. So I actually wasn't sure if you. Uh, yeah. So click on Bailey Wiki Maps Pack. Oh, okay. So I must have hit and that. say yes to that. There you go. There we go. All right. So the scenes at the end will give us some scenes to play with. Notice these are all grouped now in a little bit more coherent scenes. Um, I think, uh, yeah, let's just do the ghost ship. There you go. This is one of my favorites that I was looking at up here. And if you right click it, so that DF scene enhancements, if you had enabled that, Instead of, if you clicked on that scene, it would just go straight to it. It's, it's convenient. Okay. That's what that module, one of the many things that modules. I'll have to uh, go turn that one for. on. That's, that's, that's been one of my things is I'm always clicking these things. I'm like, yeah, oh, and no, it, yeah, right it's, it. and it's just like, okay. So, yeah. We don't, we don't know why that isn't uh, an option to toggle off yet, but hopefully it will be someday. Okay. So now we've got our scene. We can drag our new players onto it.
and we don't have any tokens assigned yet. So if you wanted to, if you double right click one of those tokens, we won't try to assign it here, but you can see in the appearance tab, uh, right now it just goes to mystery man. That's that white uh, mystery man icon. If you had other artwork, this is where you would click that little arrow button next to it and you would find new art. Now uh, go ahead and close this for a second and uh, go to the identity uh, tab. And let's see. Um, oh, you see where it says link actor data and it's checked. That's what happens when you have a player character. It'll link this token back to that actor and it'll keep them synced up. So if you change the artwork on this token, it'll change it uh, to the, the prototype token of the actor, right? So um, you, you'll be able to wow. kind of bring that same actor into another scene and they'll stay linked. They'll have the same, uh, you know, uh, lost resources, it'll link back to your, basically that character sheet that you brought up. So uh, generally for player characters, you want that for other things you may, um, you may not want it uh, linked. So with that, we'll just leave it with the standard. I I'll get you some artwork because I want, I want to make my character because hey, it's my character. I want to make it cool. Right. Um, He's a and look that's right. And so now let's bring a, uh, just a monster in from one of our compendiums. Let's use it from one of our uh, D&D Beyond compendiums. There we go. We got a lot to pick from and tons of artwork on all of them. That's pretty nice. Of course, it's a ghost ship. And now, now that you've dragged some over there, I want you to go back to your actor tab. Uh, yeah, that's right. And you can see it actually brought these actors into wow. your world, right? So if you click it open, you'd see their, their um, stat blocks or their sheet. And again, there's there's custom sheets I use for monsters that really consolidates this information into one thing because as a, as a GM, you don't want to be searching around for stuff. Oh, so this gives me ideas. So like you have a token of a monster, you do enough damage to him and I he disappears, right? I can link that to another scene and I don't have to recreate that guy with this. Right. Awesome. The link data actor data is slightly different uh, because like you can drag in that pool from your actor sidebar all the time. The deal is that you know if uh, Gomer's been damaged and you drag him into another scene, uh, then he's going to maintain that damage. So, sorry, maybe that was exactly what you were saying. Yeah, know, that, it, it does the okay. exact same thing for the monsters, right? Yeah. So just, say, say Fur Crag fires down or comes down onto this boat, and you happen to do 50 damage to him, and it scares him off for a minute. I could take him to another scene, and he'll remember what happened to him, essentially. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, sorry. I was misunderstanding. Yeah, definitely if you have like a named, like legendary creature that you want to maintain damage between scenes, then yes. Uh, the link actor data is definitely the way to do uh, all of that. Very cool. Okay, so uh, you guys want to launch some attacks here? Yeah. I'm just going to go through some basic mechanics. Okay, right. let's add everybody to combat. How about that? Uh, so go ahead and drag uh, across all of your tokens uh, with your mouse. There you go. Again, we're on the token uh, layer. That's why you could grab all of them. And now go uh, to your combat tracker in the top right. It's one of your tabs in the top right. Uh, it's the fist. There you go. Yeah. And uh, now you can hit the plus sign. Um, oh, and then what we need to do is we need to add them all to combat. So uh, right click, now that you have them all selected, right click one of them and click that little shield with the swords crossed through it. So because you had all your tokens selected, it added all of them to the combat tracker. Make sense? Makes perfect sense. Now uh, we can roll for initiative for everyone. There's automations to be able to do this everywhere. I think one of the buttons above, I think it's the all the people gathered around uh, that one. I think that rolls everyone. Yeah. There's one for roll everybody. Roll for everyone who's not there. There you go. Now this is dice so nice. Dice so nice will throw Those are virtual, beautiful. All right. And you can customize the hell out of those things. And your players can make their own custom dice. It's really a great player setting experience for them. 
but yeah, you, you saw in case they don't want to roll at their table, that's what that does. So now that we've got combat started, let's select a character and attack. Why don't you go ahead and kill my character? Because his lack of, of, of art is, uh, is, is really ticking me off. So first we want to um, target my character. We want to set my character to be targeted. So right click and bring up that HUD. And you see that little target in the bottom left? Yes. Press that. Now this character is targeted. They're going to get, they're going to receive whatever attack is, is being launched by whatever character is going to attack them. So go ahead and grab uh, that ghost, that blue ghost. And, oh, you know what we need, Zephyr, is we need the uh, token action HUD uh, also at some point. It's so nice. Okay, so uh, open up, double click that character so you can open up their sheet. Oh, sorry, uh, double left click. There we go. And go over to uh, features or spell, but let's see what they have available. All right, so withering touch. So when you, now that my character is um, uh, selected or targeted, try clicking withering touch. Now, did we, did we, oh, I'm sorry. See that little, the uh, next to it, the, the picture next to withering touch? Yes. Yeah, you can click that and that oh. will, that will launch that effect or attack or spell. Did you click it? Okay, yeah. And so now over on the right um, in your chat, the, you need to actually bring the tab up for chat. It's uh, your leftmost tab. You can see here you were, um, you rolled all your initiative and now you have your withering touch attack and damage card. So go ahead and click attack. And you can say advantage, normal disadvantage. If we had MIDI qual installed, it would even tell if you were close enough to do the attack and it wouldn't let it happen if you weren't. Oh. That's the level of automation it, it gives you. But you can see what it then calculated. It took, um, it, it did your uh, roll with advantage, then it added your modifiers to it automatically and it gave you your, your total attack, right? And so if you know that that hits, then you can go back up to the card just above it and click for damage. Yeah. Which it will because... You are level one with basically no armor. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not expecting a miracle here. Okay, so I clicked damage. Yeah. And notice you can add some situational bonuses here if you want to just add something on the fly. You can have it be a public role or not. You can have it and also so, be private. Okay, and so this is just like if I say, okay, you know, you've been a very bad bard. I'm going to give this guy an additional one d four. Yeah, or maybe there was something like bless cast and you don't have automation around it and you want to just right. add bless to this. This would be a place where you can just add a 1d4 really quick. And you can even put like negative 1d4, I think, if it's... Yeah, I believe you can use negative modifiers as well. Okay, so now that's my damage. Now, I think if you right-click it... Oh, do, is there any automation? Oh, yeah, there we go. Up, so you can right-click and say apply damage. And again, all this can be automated. Oh, wow. Right? So now I think my character is effectively dead. Now, the problem is, is you don't have a visual indication with Core Foundry, but again, with all the automation things that we just haven't turned on yet, you can have it automatically mark me as dead, right? If you right-click me or right-click the, uh, the token there, and then that, yeah, go to that status effects, you can assign me dead that way manually. But again... We want to make, and you see the little the little token show up. So there's other modules like MidiQual, I think, will make that stretch across the whole thing and make it really clear that that particular character is dead. It'll even do things like moving it to the edge of the map, so it's not even in the way anymore. Um, so we're just looking at like core foundry, basic, mostly manual stuff, but we'll show you what happens when we automate this again later. Yeah. Now, uh, but this is great because you could really quickly just get into some... Game. Yeah. Now, Zephyr, what do you think about a basic effect here, like a fireball, maybe with some token magic effects? Yeah. Do we have to? Or, okay. Never mind. Let's first check and see. Uh, let's just give something fireball really quick because that's such a great visual representation. Yeah. So open up your spells, right? Find your trusty fireball. Perfect. And then I want you to make sure that you have token magic effects 
uh, module turned on. I think that's where you're going, Zephyr, right? Well, why don't we why don't we see it without it? And then oh yeah, it. yeah, great, perfect. All right, well, so what uh, don't turn it on yet. Zephyr's gonna he had a good idea. We'll show you. Oh, it is already on. Okay, I, well, I that's fine. That's why I wanted to check. Oh, it good. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good call. Yeah, go ahead and turn so, it off for a second. Yeah. Just this one? Yep, just that one for right now. Oh, we want to activate that scene if we haven't already. Is it already active? Right, right click it and say activate. Yeah. This way, whenever we reload, it'll come back here. And whenever you activate, gotcha. it will bring your players here too. Okay. Click her open, her card. You might need to move it out of the way. Yeah. Because this is going to. Uh, now click on uh, fireball or the, the little fireball icon next to it. There you go. Now it says. Uh, oh, you have no third party. So I thought it's okay. Just say um, uh, it uncheck consume spell slot. Right? Will it cast it, Zephyr? Um, it might not, but we can edit that uh, up at the top there. Um, go ahead and close out of this. And then directly above Fireball, you see that bar that says third level. And then to the right, you've got the edit sign. So you can override the slots. And we can just go ahead and give them a, a single slot here. There you um, go. You want to make sure the right side, because it's like maximum slots. It doesn't really matter if they uh, don't have an available slot. And we'll see that when we click on the die now. Uh, because now it says we have zero slots, but we can just uncheck that consume spell slot and also be able to do it. But there's that check mark for place measure template, and you're really going to like this. You were talking about the fireball being uh -huh. 400 feet big. Oh it my God. Just this is works. so nice. And there's automation that will automatically target everybody within the fireball, and it's just a dream. But go ahead and place that down where you like. Oh, it even does the right. Yeah, it, you're exactly. And there's settings to, I think you can even uh, change its assumptions there. Um, okay, so that's like basically placing a fireball. And then what you would have to do is you have to target everybody within it that you wanted to be damaged by it. Um, but you probably over in the chat have a fireball card that then you can um, start to do stuff with. So if you target, so it's target, uh, remember if you select all of them and then uh, right click any one of them, you can hit the target button. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I use so much automation. I forget what core founder can and can't do. Uh, so just target each one manually. There you go. All right. And so now when you click the fireball, you can see you can do saving throw automatically. Uh, or at least you can, um, yeah, so try that. Click saving throw. Just do normal. I think it's going to ask you individually for all of too. Yep. I think I made no, it. we're coming in clutch. <laughs> all right. Ooh. Tools are not so lucky. Nice. All right, so then you can see who made it, who didn't, right? And then you can apply damage. Here you go. Oh, you're mean. <laughs> Look at all that we are on a boat. And yeah. so there you go. So now you can choose which one you will apply damage to, right? Um, based on who made their save. You right click like the ghouls card. Oh, I see. So it's ghoul. Oh, okay. So then yeah. so you would have made your save. That's I think like half damage. And again, you're saying, oh, that did half damage for all of them. Because I have them selected. Oh, because they're all because selected. They're all targeted. Targeted. Okay, yeah, that's gotcha. right. This is where automation comes in. I like literally I use it. I haven't I haven't not used it in over a year because <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just clicking on these things individually. It's funny relearning uh, some of the combat mechanics. So I think that the big thing would be is like, okay, you select them all to target, but you don't really need to do that. Well, I guess you, you target them all, and then you have to individually target them for their individual damage. So then yeah. I would do, do Nomer, right? And then I would say half damage, and then I would undo him and say, now it's do I even need these guys targeted? If they're right. unselected, can I just apply like half damage? Yeah, just grab there you go. Oh, it looks like all three are yeah. selected right now. It looks like um, yeah. they're not targeted, but they are selected. You see that slight orange outline around them? 
Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're showing that they're selected. Um, the the big arrows are targeted. Oh, so that uh, might also be He also needs to turn on. There's that one feature where it makes so you can just click off anywhere and it'll deselect everyone. Oh, that's a that's, that's a uh, setting in your in your settings there in your settings tab. It's probably one that you want to turn on. It lets you just unselect everyone by clicking anywhere on the map. So uh, it's in here somewhere. Left click left to click. release objects. Yeah, left click to release objects about halfway down. I don't know why this doesn't isn't on by default because it's so convenient. But now look, now you've deselected them. Oh, that's been driving me crazy. Right? Because I would hit escape and it yep. would close things. And I'm just, because yeah. that's normally like, and it's it, it's weird because in modeling 3D, like I do a lot of the times, my buttons are a little different. So I haven't gone through and done all my rebindings to like how I like to pan around or rotate. Yeah. And, but that's exactly. a bit, that's a huge help right there. Right. Okay. So now you you could apply damage, uh, you know, to each each one individually. But in the next session, we're going to we're going to turn on automation because uh, you don't yeah. want to you don't want to have to do this. This is this is yeah. monkey work. Um, but uh, notice there's also some um, dice down down below. That's the dice tray module in the bottom right. So it's just other ways to like kind of quickly roll dice um, when you're together. Okay, so now we want to show you just an effect. So go to your um, lay. We're going to delete this fireball. Uh, uh, what's it called? A pattern, or I don't. It's, it's a it's measured the, template. Measured templates. So on the left, under in your next layer down, is your measured templates. It looks like a ruler. Oh yeah, and then yeah. Now you can just click that and delete it. And now go turn on token magic effects module. This module is like one of my favorites. It applies effects to like every friggin' thing in the game. And it does more than anybody ever really realizes. You can make tiles on fire, you can do all sorts of stuff, but it also has some built-in effects just for casting spells. So go ahead and cast that fireball spell again. There you go. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Right? <laughs> So and this, and there's so there's so many other things, but this is like basic, so easy to do. Your players will love it. Um, I cannot wait to start dropping traps on people. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> we we have prefab traps that we build uh, just just to do that. But look, that's that's the that's what these little modules do. They one little thing creates all of a sudden these like automated effects and stuff that is just really really easy to play. JB2A is amazing and uh, automated animations is going to be really killer when we get into that next time. But this is it. This is like basic like how you now get players in. We've got content um, we we just uh, set up our first combat, and uh, you know, and now we can kind of move forward from here and keep optimizing, keep building. But was this helpful for now? Oh, Fox? yeah. Well, I'm. You you guys are really cutting into my sleep time. So <laughs> this is exciting. It's like I just want to go start building stuff because this just just is this is exactly what I was kind of looking for to be able to kind of add whatever level of automation that I want to, right? But not only that, but the graphics and the visualizations are on a whole nother level and the ease of being able to use them for my users is so much better. Yeah. Um, as an example, the most complicated thing I think that some of my players ever experience in D&D are not the puzzles, not the monsters, not the characters or anything. It's figuring out what do what shape are the cone of effects and the radiuses and stuff mm -hmm. of their spells. Yeah. And so it's like, do I hit this monster or not? This takes all of that guesswork out. And that's right. Looks really good. That's right. And you add a little automation to it and they will be uh, they'll be loving it. Okay. Well, guys, I think we accomplished a lot for tonight. This was this was this might even end up as, as two episodes, but um but uh, Vox, appreciate you uh, getting this far with us. I yeah. feel like you're right on the cusp of uh, of really. I mean, you, you've already got enough to start setting things up, and yep. uh, and then in the next one, we're just going to add a little bit more automation and some other things to it, and really kind of give you the tools where you can make these 
uh, these combats go fast. You can, um, you know, really kind of let the technology get out of the way and, you know, let your players have fun. Yeah, it's going to be great to see how the players, once I get it set up properly and everything with all of the components and everything, see how they interact with one another and the chaos that will ensue. Love it. All right, guys. Zephyr, thanks for joining me uh, as, as a wingman on this again. Uh, Vox, appreciate you, uh, you you being here as always. And we're yep. looking forward to the next installment, guys. Yep. Sounds great. Thanks again for the time. And I'm looking forward to the next one. All right, guys. See you later. Yep. Later. <laughs>